Coming out on Saturday on Beyond the Vibe, kicking off our holiday season, I'm joined by Sean Sullivan of Mojo Thunder. I was really interested in the drums when I was an early, like early age kid. Um, I wanted like a red drum. I saw Aerosmith on TV on one time, I think, as a kid, and I just I saw a red drum set. I just I had to have it. And I woke up and it was there, you know, under the tree, and it was it was it was pretty cool, man. I just it, it went from there. I, you got me A new dawn bryson just started playing that that intro riff you know and, and it was kind of a joke i just i heard it we were in rehearsal and i just heard it and i just ah, I'm shot. and i just was goofing off and then i was just it kind of just it was like all right let's let's lead into something here and you know and and that song you know that song is about a new age coming you know kind of coming of age for for us as, as young men and in, in our generation of, of people. So if you really listen to the lyrics, there's a bunch of like Game of Thrones quotes in there because I'm a huge nerd. And I, <laughs> I, I will absolutely end up obsessed with Game of Thrones. And, and, I, and I justified it to the guys. I was like, you know, I was like, Led Zeppelin writes about Gollum and Lord of the Rings. Yes. And, you know, I was like, I, I'm doing the same. It's just I'm I'm doing the same thing here. So just let me be, guys. You know. So I'm here with uh, Sean of Mojo Thunder. Thank you very much for joining me. Oh, dude, thanks for having me. <laughs> That's a cool one. Um, so the thing that we'd like to do, uh, you know, on the on the show is uh, we like to take a. Uh, go back back to the very beginning for an artist. Um, so, so what got you first into music? I was really interested in the drums when I was an early like early age kid. Um, I wanted like a red drum. I saw Aerosmith on TV on one time, I think, as a kid, and I just I saw a red drum set. And I just I had to have it. And I woke up and it was there, you know, under the tree, and it was it was it was pretty cool, man. I just it, it went from there. I I loved drums i love performing um it led me into doing theater and like ballet and dance and a bunch of stuff wow. like that and then found my way back to the the rock and roll i guess after a little bit of that but mm. but yeah it was, it was the drums for me man I, I saw aerosmith and i was like damn that is cool <laughs> you know it was just it was awesome <laughs> so. that's cool so so what kind of made you want to go from being at the back of the stage to the front of the stage? Was there kind of a moment for you where you, you thought, actually, I'm going to go? Um, you know, like I, like I said, I did theater. My sister got me mm. involved as a, as a kid. And, um, you know, it was, I grew up, I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed performing. And so I naturally started to gravitate towards musicals and singing. And once I started realizing that I had, maybe not the typical musical theater voice that I had more of a like pop rock kind of voice. I was like, Oh, well maybe, maybe that is the move, you know, and, and kind of was just finagled my way into being a singer kind of. So, mm. and I just, you know, it's not, that I don't really like being in the front to be honest. <laughs> I, I, there's so much pressure up there. You know, you got to talk to the crowd and, and, yeah, yeah. and I, I hate it, you know, I, <laughs> I just wear it, you know, and, and I wish I could just play guitar or play drums in the back and just sing from back there, you know. Like, <laughs> you you but, would be surprised of the amount of singers that we've had on here that have been like, I I don't really, I didn't really want to be the singer. I didn't really want to be the guy at the front. Yeah. <laughs> They've just kind of ended up there by default. Or right, yeah. Happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you're in a band with three other guys that, you know, don't really sing, it's like yeah. well i guess you're the you're the guy so yeah yeah that that's the common story we hear the uh you know the guy that's the guitarist it's like well we haven't got a singer we we usually hear the well i'll be the singer until we get somebody and then nobody right. ever comes <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. so so on that uh on that topic how did the band all come together uh the band so zach our drummer 
met the guitar player through a Craigslist ad, like they're just wanting to meet up and jam with people. And then they, uh, they had a mutual friend that brought on uh, Andrew, the bass player, and then they played around for a little bit. And then they found me on Facebook and like one of our, you know, mutual friends had shared a video that I had posted and they were like, who is that guy? And they hit me up and they came and because I, we were all, you know, they were doing their own thing and uh, I was running a, like a little band of my own, you know, and was trying to take that somewhere and, and be a starting point. But they kind of came in and ruined all of that. And just, you just know, poached you, do it like yeah, half you. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, and it's it's been great ever since. So I haven't looked back. It's been it's been awesome. But mm. and, you know, to, I think I feel like that's kind of typical. You know, with with newer bands now. I mean, social media. You know, you just meet so many people, and you know, they were in a situation where they were looking for a new singer, and uh, you know, they they found one. So. Just you know, social media for real. I mean, it's it's a it's a dangerous game out there. You know, it, it's Watch a double edged sword. It really is. It, it really is, man. Yeah. I, you know, I, I I said all the time. I wish I didn't have to do. Uh, you know, I wish I didn't have to have Facebook or Instagram. Mm. But you know, but the promotion side of it is like that's free ad advertisement. You got it. You got to be on there. So this is it. We we've become trapped in the system. <laughs> we have to remain. <laughs> we're now we're part of the simulation. You know? Yeah, <laughs> we're all just here now. But well, that's cool. Um, so the debut album, uh, Hymns from the Electric Church, um, which was yeah. released uh, last year to, to critical acclaim, um, Classic Rock magazine gave it nine out of ten. Yeah. Um, what was kind of the the writing and recording process like for you guys? And did you kind of go in with a certain approach that you wanted, like from the get go? Uh, yeah, approach, yes. You know, we uh, writing the album. I think Bryson. Bryson was the one, our guitar player, he, we were in a meeting with each other and he, and he had said, you know, I've been thinking about this title and I'm not saying I want to do a concept album, but I would like everything to kind of fit a title for an album. And he, he dropped hymns from the electric church and we were all just, I was sold from the get. I was like, yep, I'm in, let's go. Let's right. And, and so that there's just that title kind of, and, and there's some ideas about, about what the electric church is that kind of influenced what we just what, what we decided to do and write about. But, you know, as 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 far as the recording of it, I mean, we really wanted to do as much like live in a room as we could, you know. And so that's pretty, that's how we started every track was just we would all be in the same room. Our amps were pretty much in the same room like it was just, and it's a it was a giant kind of warehouse kind of studio, mm. you know, and uh, and and you would get all the room mics and all of the the real room reverb and and it sounded awesome, you know, and it was great. And then you'd go back and say, well, let's recut that, as, you know, as, as long as the drums and the bass were good on a tape, like we could we could mess with the guitars later and, and add in all the the cool stuff later. But you know, I think we're we're kind of old school. I think we're transitioning more into a new school style of recording. Um, I, I think we, we see some benefits of it. We definitely like being in the same room, though. That is uh, that is one thing that I personally enjoy. I, I love recording. Even mm. if those aren't the takes that get used, I, like, that's how I like to start. Like, that's, you know, that's the essence of it. Let's add on the flavor later, you know? Hmm. I, th I think that's great for like the just the chemistry of the band you know if you just bounce and ideas around it's like if there's nobody there it's kind of you just go and do your thing and then go home it's like there's nothing right. it's know. it's you know and there's just something about it you know it's just you know I mean, how boring is it to sit and play to a click track and <laughs> okay the guitar's done time for guitar two you know let's add in bass yeah, you know. it just feels a bit robotic, I think. Yeah, and, you know, we're, we're ones to swim tempo. Like, you know, even live, like, we're, we're swimmers. We get lost in certain moments and get excited in others, speed up, you know, but yeah, yeah. that's just that's just kind of part of it, you know. It's a it's a real thing. It's a, you know, it's, it's a living, the music itself is a living and breathing thing, and that 
hour and a half that were or 45 minutes that were on stage you know it's, mm. and it can ebb and flow in different ways and the album kind of i feel like you can definitely hear that in the album of just some push and pull and some swim and taking liberties in that kind of realm of, of mm. that so yeah um two tracks that kind of immediately stuck out to me on the album was uh soul and uh, the last one new dawn uh, yeah I, f- I feel it kind of it really showcases the band's range and, and in particular your vocals as well um oh, thank you. Could, you could you talk a bit about those songs and kind of maybe the meaning yeah. behind them or? um you know a new dawn Bryson just started playing that that intro riff, you know, and and it was kind of a joke. I just I heard it. We were in rehearsal, and I just heard it, and I just ah, I on a mountain shot, and I just was goofing off, and then I was just it kind of just it was like all right, let's let's lead into something here, and you know, and and that song, you know, that song is about a new age coming, you know, kind of coming of age for for us as, as young men and in our generation of, of people that you know listen to us and have conflicting views about the world and, and are ready to see change and and then that's really what that song is about and you know I mean it says it in the time new dawn mm-hmm. we're, we're waiting on it we're, and you know I think by the end of that song we're great like we're trying to be a part of the bringing of a new dawn you know starting a new age starting a new trend starting something new you know and especially in a world of like just that everything is the same (laughs) you know like everybody works the nine to five everybody wants the 2.5 kids and Mm -hmm. you know everybody wants the six figure salary and be comfortable to you know and it's and that's just i don't know that's that's not that doesn't entice me so it's just i'm ready for a a new way of thinking, a new way of doing things, a new way of business, uh, all of it. And, mm-hmm. and so that's why I think that song kind of comes from. And there's also, if you really listen to the lyrics, there's a bunch of like Game of Thrones quotes in there because I'm a huge nerd. And I, <laughs> I, I, I absolutely am obsessed with Game of Thrones. And, and, I, and I justified it to the guys. I was like, you know, I was like, Led Zeppelin writes about Gollum and Lord of the Rings. And, yes. And, you know, I was like, I, I'm doing the same. It's just I'm I'm doing the same thing here. So just let me be, guys. You know, but and then Soul. You know, Soul was like the the first song we had ever written. Like we we had been sitting on that one for for a while. And uh, and actually, like the video that they saw when they have found out who I was, they I was singing a verse that I was writing at the time and it became so because they had a song that was pretty much it lined up the same same chord same kind of feel and uh and so when we put that together with kind of their chorus and everything I mean, it just kind of went just together and we were like ah we're a band like this is this is a good song let's mm-hmm. you know and and you know and uh, I think that song is is heartbreak and going back to heartbreak again and again and even though you ain't getting anything from it you still are getting something from it and you know it's kind of came out of a out of a place like that but it, we, we've we sat on that one for a while and because we didn't release it we, we recorded we have like an old recording that I, I cringe when I listen to now <laughs> I, when I go through Dropbox and I'm like oh gosh like that that is just terrible you know and and but then you know the the, the version we have on the album, I'm, I'm pretty happy with. So, and mm. um, the I mean, a new dawn in particular was the first track that I heard by you guys. I mean, this is like it's been a bit of a mad weekend because I I only discovered you guys at the time of recording this on Friday. <laughs> so oh, wow. here we are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right on. It's, it's been a it's bit great. of a whirlwind, but the it, it just really struck me like there was this kind of uh you know as, as you mentioned there it was a little bit of this kind of led zeppelin vibe on on a new dawn and it just had this kind of real epicness about it and i was like who the hell is this you know <laughs> and then like hey the other tracks on the album and it's like there's some real variety in there you know it's not just kind of one one thing oh you know? yeah sure i mean we talk about it all the time of how bryson in particular and 
you know, we'll sit and, and, and talk about, you can only listen to so much Robert Plant, right? Like, otherwise, I'm just, Mama! I'm done. <laughs> I hear that too many times, like, where I'm out, you know? And, and we, and Bryson and the other guys, like, they've always been pretty heavy on, like, the Stones and really, like, chordal based songs, you know, and mm. punk rock and, and stuff like that. And, and, kind of trying to find a blend of those i mean there's tons of other influences out there i mean yeah, yeah. for us but, but you know we we try to shy we shy away from being like a riff rock like if it sounds too zeppelin it's it's like all right let's let's get this yeah. out of here you know and because you're right like too much of the same just high vocals and riffs mm. and badass drums and bass like it's there's only so much i can take <laughs> you know like where's the i don't know just where's the substance in it you know so mm. it, it was interesting because it's like you know you can't pinpoint that one you know influence i mean there's there's other bands out there where it's like there's a clear influence of a particular band but with oh, yeah. you guys it's like this this real variety and it's it's almost like you've kind of you're a bit of a melting pot with your own identity as well it's you know it's this kind of oh sure full thing I, you um, know i think we all have different tastes in mm. music so it's i think we all kind of bring different ears and and like different oral perspectives to what is happening you know it's mm. so like it's you know a bunch of, like a couple of us listen to like we all listen to hip-hop but we all listen to completely different hip-hop a lot of us listen to country in the band but we all listen to completely different country bands like you know it's so it's we all like similar things but like our our taste buds are just different so when you put it all together it's just a it's a real nice chemistry you know mm. and i think that you know like right now we're writing a bunch of new songs and working on a new album and, and kind of getting some stuff down and you know we're not inhibited to change things up you know like we don't we don't think we have like a sound like you know we just want to write good music like what whatever it is like whatever comes out comes out like we're not going to try to be one thing or be another you know so i think having that melting pot just inhibits that it, it lets that flow organically it just we can go to different spaces you know and have a, a great time doing it mm. um I, I read somewhere i think it was in that classic rock article where you guys had, had said you know it was like you were almost kind of alt rock like it wasn't this kind of old southern rock or something it was like that. yeah yeah southern alternative is what we were kind of branded mm. at that time and you know i think that's a real response to not wanting to be southern rock because mm. like we're not a southern rock band you can definitely mm. tell there's some southern flavor in there by like you know i mean that's in there but it, we we hate that we do not we we are, we're like we are not a southern rock band like we love southern rock like i love skinner i love the alma brothers atlanta rhythm section like, i love that stuff but you know it's uh, we don't want to be pigeonholed ever mm -hmm. you know we want it like a, you know we want to be free to make whatever we want we don't you know so we don't feel like we have to be this like rock and roll Band. I don't know. It's just, it's, I don't know. We're just, we're kind of open with it, you know, and no i i completely get it i think that i mean i, I spoke with uh you know tj from the georgia thunderbolts a while back yeah uh, you know? dude tj he's cool yeah 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 he's and great. we it, it, there's this thing i'm not sure what it is i don't know whether it's just because of leonard skinner but every time a band from that part of the world comes out everybody assumes well it's southern rock and i think that's right and and it's like well you could be anything you know you could be country you could be hip-hop you could be whatever you know oh yeah <laughs> i mean and they're even more south than us like you know like we're mm. kentucky's kind of like the gateway of the south mm. once you get past kentucky then you get into like the real south land and that that's a good point man I, you know just kind of geography is kind of dictates what people expect you, you know so yeah yeah no i completely get that um of course you guys have the uh the european tour coming up next year uh kicking yes. off in belgium in march um, yeah is this is this the first time that you've come over kind of oh yeah Europe. yeah All right so that that's going to be yeah. interesting um, yeah we we are stoked yeah 
<laughs> um, do you guys kind of have anything in like really in particular that you look forward to playing live maybe something for the audience to kind of look out for in particular um you know we have a song off our ep loose lips that's called uh queen of the night and uh we it's a it's a pretty standard song for us to have in our set because it's just it's, we do a really cool jam and then we throw a pop it was a rolling stone and a big guitar solo in there and it's it's just a really cool live thing to be a part of. It's it's really fun for the. I think the audience really get, gets a kick out of it, and I mean it just and then it goes kind of ballistic at the end and, and <laughs> gets wild and it's it's great. So so yeah. And I, other than that, I think you can be maybe just expecting different sounds, you know. Mm. So just. Nice. It's going to be interesting. I mean, obviously, you said that you know you've not been around Europe before. A lot of the guys that, that I've, I've spoken to in the past, when they first hit into Europe, there's this kind of they, they, they'll have the stories at the end of it. You know, the mad shenanigans. So you've got all this to come. <laughs> like <laughs> you're, you're going to have like van breakdowns. You're going to have all of the classic stories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully the, hopefully the band stays, stays together, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to it, man. It's, it's going to be a hellacious amount of work and travel for six weeks. And, and we're just so looking forward to it. We're mm -hmm. just, we're just tickled to be able to do it. So yeah, yeah. the only I thing, thing is I, I wish we were going to the UK. So I know. we're only in just kind of Eastern Europe over there. <laughs> I know. I know. It's obviously you. You know, you're doing quite a lot of German dates. Um, you know, yeah. Germany's fantastic for like you know rock and well, generally anything with with uh, instruments. Really, it's um, you know, it's such a a hive uh, for Europe. I think you know, it's a great place yeah. to start. Yeah, I'm excited, man. I, I think you know, we know a lot of bands that are bigger. You know, they, you know, like take Blackstone Cherry, who's from Kentucky, you know, and they're freaking huge across the pond where they mm. sell. I mean, they're, they are doing it over there. And then they come back here and kind of play still great big shows. But, you know, it's just like the, you can tell that Europe is the market for them. Like they, they just thrive over there. And it's, yeah. It's, the, the UK loves Blackstone. They, they do yeah. great over here every time. They, like, they, I mean, the the Albert Hall videos they put yeah. I mean, it, it's just the people are, I'm just like damn it I want that <laughs> <laughs> you know, like just I mean that's great man. They, they're just they love it so much it's like mm. that's just awesome it's great going going forward obviously you mentioned a little more well, you teased a little bit there with a with a new album do you have any any plans going forward after the after the tour um after, no, I mean the only plan in our immediate sightline is is just coming back with a with a force and just hitting the ground running you know and just going pedal to the metal um right now we're, we're booking a lot for next year so we're trying to be heavy on the on the festivals next year um and really dig into those but i think we also uh, we've also been dabbling in recording ourselves and and, and um just getting some stuff down and working at a, at a at our pace and how much we want to work on the, these new songs and you know right now we're kind of in the writing demo phase of, of all these songs and really figuring out what these songs are about and, and fine tuning them we're kind of we've been playing them live for a little bit trying to see what things work and what things don't and and so I think you know we're taking off the next couple months to do that and to just mm. be in writing mode and just go and, and be in the studio and, and try to get something down so but i think after you know i think a, a new album is definitely in the works for 2023 so we just don't know when when that mm. would be so but that that's the plan man you know and come back with the force and just hit the ground and, and stay on the road as much as we can in, in america and and you know just try to try to build the market up here mm. so and then, and then hopefully we hopefully by you know if manny loves us and people <laughs> in europe are like these guys are cool we'll come back 
you know. And, yeah, you, you got to do UK thing thing over here. at some point. You got. I know. Okay. I, 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 you know, as much as I'm excited, I'm, I'm really excited for Spain and really excited for Germany. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am so. When I found out, I was like, "We're not going to." to the uk at all like we're not going to ireland or scotland or like anything yeah. like nothing like okay you know when, but when i you, a, that's a whole lot so. when you're when you're stood in the rain in scotland you'll be regretting that decision <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's gonna be wind there's gonna be rain it's gonna be horrible <laughs> um now, uh, a question that i always like to to finish on that i ask every guest that comes on um a bit of a hypothetical one uh, if you could tour with one band from the past and one band from the present, who would they be? Present is easy. Uh, if I could tour with someone right right now, it would be this band called Lawrence. Um, and they're like a brother sister duo that they call it soul pop. And they take a lot of like R and B and gospel and put it into like kind of a pop frame of mind. Mm. And they have like a whole funk band behind them with like horns and guitar and, and the brother plays keys and he sings and he is a big monster. And Gracie is just, she's the, she's great, man. And she has an incredible voice and her stage presence is, is crazy. So uh, I, can't, I can't get enough of them. I would tour with them. You know, if they, if they could call me today and I'd be like, I'm there. What's the date? <laughs> um, in from the past, I don't know. My I mean, first, could, inst- my first instinct would be to say I would love down the road with like Ray Charles, you know, like that's. But that's purely because I would just love to meet him and hang out and talk to him and, and jam and just witness him. But I think as far as like a band, I would. I don't know. Everybody struggles with they, this question. Everybody's like, oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, there's just so many. You know, I feel like I'm offending all the ones I don't say that are going through my mind. But, you I mean, know, Ray I'm, Charles is an interesting choice. I mean, we've never had a Ray Charles before. <laughs> uh, Ray, Ray Charles is, is the man. I'll say that. Mm. He is, he's a big influence on, on me and how I approach singing in a lot of ways. And, mm. I love Ray Charles and his piano playing is just great, you know, and I love it. So, yeah, that's my answer. I'm going on the road with Ray Charles. I mean, that would be a wild gig. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'd be funny opening up for him, you know, it's like you get this big raucous rock show and then you just, yeah. you know, hallelujah. It's great. Oh, man. I mean, that would be interesting. <laughs> I'd have I'd have a ball every night, you know. Yeah, <laughs> we got to. I mean, yeah. the great the great thing with stuff like that is is it as you said there, it's like you know what what could you learn you know from somebody with that that level of talent? Oh yeah, yeah. if you could go back and just pull that that well, just be a fly on a wall. Hell, mm. you know, I don't even have to meet him if I could just be in the room and mm. wow, he's. He really is a genius, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, for those that uh, obviously haven't checked out uh, Mojo Thunder and their killer album, uh, Hymns from the Electric Church, uh, you can go and grab yourself a copy uh, in the link de- uh, in the description below or uh, listen in on Spotify. Um, and uh, thank you very much for joining me, Sean. Hey, thank you so much for having me, man. This has been fantastic. I've loved it. It's great. <laughs> oh, no, it's cool, man.